Friday Eve. Happy 1st of February. February 1st. <laughs> February 1st. Yeah, I know. We say February, but really it's spelled February. February, right? Do you say February? No, I say February. Okay, me too. Yeah. Uh, that's the Long Island game. So getting. Long Island, right? Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God, Mr. Sheffield. Uh -huh. <laughs> You know, I, I was joking around earlier on the morning show, but this has been the, the longest, longest month, month we're getting out of, like 47 <laughs> weeks in <laughs> there, January. There were 31 days, but according to Nicole's calendar, it said 47 oh weeks. Gosh. I looked, it said 47 <laughs> weeks. I was like, how did you manage to do all that? I don't know. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, God. it's good to see you. Oh, always good to see you. Good yeah. to be here. And there, do we, I, and I don't know. If, did you see the sun? Jamie, do you see any sun on the iCams anywhere? Can you show that? I don't even know. If, oh, look, oh, look, look, wow. that, 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 that orb. What it looks like? It's an orb in the sky. <laughs> Take me to your Take leader. Take me to your <laughs> sunbeam. Oh, oh, look at that okay. in Hartford. Okay, all right. All Let right. the sunshine in. Yeah, we're expecting kind of mostly cloudy skies during the day today. Feels like Thanks, we're in Jamie. San Francisco, doesn't uh, it? It does. <laughs> Lately, like 10 days of no sun. First alert, live radar. It's scanning the state dry. Good morning. Now, futurecast gets a little interesting overnight tonight through very early tomorrow morning. We promised you all week that there was a chance of precipitation in the seven-day forecast. It's coming tonight very late through early tomorrow morning. There's a little rain at midnight tonight. Now, watch as the temperatures drop. We might see a little bit of snow. Now, this is very minor. It's not significant. We just want to bring it to your attention. Third shifters and you and I, Nicole, we're going to be driving through a couple of raindrops and a couple of snowflakes. Mm. And then it scoots on out by 8 o'clock. It's pretty much done with a couple of rain or snow showers expected through the late morning into the early afternoon. And then watch the clearing take place. That's the action we're expecting for the upcoming weekend. Today, enjoy temperatures in the low 40s. It is going to be an unbelievable forecast mostly cloudy milder today isolated rain and snow showers tomorrow as I just showed you with future cast and then Saturday brighter finally Woo! brighter weather with temperatures a little bit cooler than tomorrow but still nonetheless above average the normal high for this time of year is about 36 degrees yeah that's gonna be really nice this weekend yeah I, I expect outside. you to take a walk on the beach done done with I, Ringo and I want Ooh. a picture Okay, All right. I'll send it to you All right, Saturday. very good. Well, it <laughs> seems a race that seemingly never ends is never ending. Bridgeport mayor candidate, uh, mayoral candidate John Gomes is refusing to end his campaign. Yeah, despite calls from city councilors and even Governor Lamond, Gomes has announced that he will appear on the general election ballot as an independent. The mayoral saga began all the way back in September when Gomes said a supporter of Mayor Ganna was seen stuffing ballot boxes before the primary, which Ganna also won. Hmm. On February 27th, Bridgeport voters will head to the polls for the fourth time in six months. That's a lot of voting. That's a lot of voting, yeah. And, you know, Ganim is saying that there shouldn't be another general election after he won the court-ordered primary last week. Um, but, you know, you have to remember that we do also have another candidate in the running. This is Republican David Hearst. Mm. He is still in the race as well. Okay. We'll have to wait and see what happens, mm -hmm. as I always say. It'll be interesting. What happened with the Yukon? Oh, well, That's one finger. One finger. We'll say it all. Number one. Number one. Oh, yeah, baby. I wish I had one of those big foam fingers. <laughs> George has one of them. Does he? Bring oh, it yeah. in. I will. Right, I will. Uh, the number one ranked UConn men's basketball team has yet again another Big East win under its belt. Yeah, the Huskies just came out on top over Providence last night. Things looked a little dicey for UConn as Providence got an early lead, but the Huskies rallied, securing a one-point lead at the end of the first half. And from there, it was all a breeze for UConn as the team finished with 74 points on the board over Providence's 65. So the UConn men have so far this year been undefeated. <laughs> yeah. And the next game is Saturday against St. John's at MSG. Now, who do I root for? I know this is where it gets really hard for you. I went to St. John's. They didn't let me into their law school. I'm going with UConn. I was just going to say, yeah, go with Connecticut. I'm going You've been with here Connecticut. longer than you would in New York, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. pretty much. Yeah, right? right? Like split down I think it, a little bit more in New York. Um, what am I? I've been here 20, 25 years. Oh, so, so you're inching towards the halfway mark. I am mark. inching towards the halfway wow. mark. Wow. You get a big remarkable. birthday coming I'm up I'm almost a Kineticution. <laughs> Is that what they call it? Kineticution? <laughs> I just made that word <laughs> or up. Or a nutmegger, I a guess. A nutmegger. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. Well, today is a very important day. Not only is it February 1st, but it also marks the first day of Black History Month. And city leaders in New Haven are honoring a local legend. Check this out. Judge Constance Baker Motley will now be appearing on the 47th Black Heritage Stamp. She is a native of New Haven and was actually the first black woman to argue a case before the U.S. Supreme Court. Just an incredible woman, right? What oh a gosh. trailblazer. Motley was also the first black woman to serve as a federal judge. Huge. 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 I mean, just an, an incredible accomplishment. Yeah. So. She went to Columbia Law and graduated in 1946, and she wrote actually the original complaint in the case of Brown, uh, Brown the Board of Education. Board of Education. Yeah. That was a huge, huge, huge case. case. I, I didn't realize that she wrote the original complaint. Isn't Is that, that amazing? Did you know that? No, I didn't know that either. I'm wow. just told, uh, I was reading the script. Motley died in 2005 at 84 years old. God rest her soul, and she's being remembered today. Yeah, a trailblazer there in the civil rights movement. Absolutely. So, and it's so nice to honor her by Absol way of a yeah, stamp. Yeah, I think right? it's terrific. And this coming Saturday, there's a rugby team that will be taking their annual plunge for hunger in Willimantic. Yes, yeah, so the Liberty Bank Surprise Squad, they wanted to spread some kindness to the folks behind the event who are winning by giving back to their community. Here's Channel 3's Irene O'Connor with the story. Every year, dozens of people take the plunge into the frigid February water at Lauder Park. Started by Ray Aramini, the rugby coach at Eastern Connecticut State University. All the money raised goes to the Covenant Soup Kitchen and Pantry in Willimantic. I think the dignity and the care in which uh, meals are served here at Covenant Soup Kitchen is overwhelming. Ray and his rugby players have made volunteering a team sport. The idea of giving back should be a cornerstone of any athletic program. Covenant is a very busy place. They serve thousands of meals here a day and serve thousands of working families here a year. Pretty unprecedented for our organization. Um, it's The need is much higher than what we've seen in the past, um, even higher than during COVID. Anya Walakonis says with donations down, they ran through their whole food budget in the first five months of the fiscal year. They really count on fundraisers like the plunge. This might be the difference between being able to provide fresh milk from our local dairy or not having any milk available at all. So last week so we just wanted oh, to give you guys a donation for your wonderful cause. The Liberty Bank Surprise Squad spread some kindness to Ray and one of his players. This is wonderful. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Thank you. Ray says at the Covenant Soup Kitchen, kindness is what they do best, treating each person with dignity. If you feed a mouth, you're going to win, but if you feed the person, you're going to win every time. Irene O'Connor, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. That's mm. awesome. That is awesome. Good job there. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we are checking in with Dr. Laura Saunders in a little bit, and uh, we're going to find out a few important things around anxiety. Oh, really? Why exercise and less caffeine could be a key to managing that said anxiety. Mm. You're off the calf. Got to get moving. Got to get moving. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> The first big storm of the season. First alert weather day as we keep an eye on winter storm Aspen. Channel 3 had your first alert to every change. Visibility is down. Slick travel out there. The most watched, most experienced, most accurate team. Giving you the first alert to winter storm Aspen since last weekend. Keeping you safe with Connecticut's only first alert live radar. Snowfall rates of 2 to 3 inches per hour. Updates on the first alert weather app. A little changeover. With winter just getting cranking. Stay with Channel 3 first alert weather. Harbor Freight knows skill is important because on any given day, we're all mechanics, carpenters, fixers.